surfer here, and uh, I am a forester from UMB, graduated in 93. This is my wood lot, and I've been thumbing this plantation. Uh, I'm taking out what's less desirables to let the other trees go on and thrive, and I've been using it as firewood. And I have a trail system here that I'm using a side by side to bring the wood out. And this is roughly an acre along the road here that I've cut enough wood for two years of firewood, uh, probably 16 cord out of the acre. Uh, I've left a variety of sizes, uh, some of the better looking aspens. But uh, favoring the uh, little hardwoods and, and the uh, planted spruce. Let's just pan here a little bit to where we've cut around here. Some firewood out of it. and You can see all the slash there. There's not a whole lot of depth there. It's real fine tops that's left. I take everything right down two inches for firewood. As I said earlier, there's an acre of ground there. And now we're coming around to where the trail swings. Right there, makes a big turn and then straight ahead there is that's a secondary trail goes up there and ends. I haven't cut in there yet other than trail. Okay, that's uh, the rest of the trail. Pretty much as far up there as you can see. There's probably another three cord on the ground here for firewood. I've already hauled in three and a half cord, and that'd be enough for this winter. And most of it has come out of this area up through. I cut a little there last fall for firewood as well. So, yeah, there's a good 16 cord I've taken off this acre. You see uh, these little trees, this, this ash and most of these are ash. Some of them are kind of skinny, but I'm hoping in another five years they'll thicken up enough to stiffen up more before they start getting too lengthy and, and skinny. But they'll get lots of light now. I would say, just eyeballing it here, that there's a good 2,000 stems to the acre because uh, they're, they're not spaced very far apart any more than they would be when they were planted, the spruce were planted. But the spacing everything since, including the hardwoods, I'd, I'd say there's 2,000, because there might be a little light spot here and there, but there's there's lots of trees here. And you, 10 years makes a lot of difference in here. This, this slash will be all gone, and the canopy will be all closed in again. And, uh, Maybe another few years after that and need to go through it again, but uh, ten, 10 years will give it quite a jump when they respond here. They were, the spruce were getting a little bit crowded and overtopped, but he asked them, so it was a good thing to take a lot of them out. I didn't want to take them all, I just I wanted to leave the nice ones, because aspen does grow pretty good and big up here. Years in the past, we've cut Aspen probably 30, 35 inches in diameter up here. And these aspen right now, after 26 years or so, they're 70 feet. And there's rings in there, almost with your finger in those big aspens that I left. Because I've had to take some of them down that have like a pistol grip on the butt end of them because of the scarification process here before we planted it had a few of them, so I took those out, called them out for firewood, and uh, he was quite a jagger. I'll be calling this out, start at her tomorrow, and I'll clean what I have home, that three and a half cord there in the pile, and this will be a good four cord all together here. I'll have more than enough firewood. And the aspen burns pretty good. It doesn't last like, like maple, but you can sure heat a place. And you can cut nice size trees there, 10 inch aspen, you know, every 25 years. 
you're, you're, you're cutting three times the volume as you would in hardwood on the same piece of ground over the same length of time. So, you know, it takes 80 years for rock maple, sugar maple, to, to get that size. And that's if you thinned it. You leave it thick, you're only going to get stuff six, eight inches. And, uh, so there's, up here I've got a bunch of wood to thin out on the left of this trail. There's a lot of, uh, what I call junk fur because it's full of bugs, like the carpenter ant there. There's, there's one in the monk's den tree that I'll leave to see because it's got a pretty good butt on it and good growth in between the world. But there's, right there, there's four at least fur that got some, just little stuff like that, and then there's a couple like that that have come out. But there's one good one in a monk that I'll leave for seed. Uh, my other goal here is to get stuff coming back for the deer to browse on. I've got all kinds of moose, I haven't got to worry about them too much, but there's uh, not very many deer around, and I'd kind of like just to, you know, in a few years to get enough height and uh, feed underneath coming for, for the deer to winter, because the deer don't stay here in the wintertime. I come up here in the middle of January and February, March, there's not a deer track up in this country. But until we get the snow, there's deer roaming around, but never see more than three, four deer, maybe as many as six the whole summer long. The deer population is way down. So we have to do our best, I guess, to help the, the deer out. As you can see, there's very little, pretty much nothing for undergrowth. Just bare ground and dead limbs. Deer ain't gonna get much of that. So, I'm gonna get some light in here and a little stuff, a little hard to come into this stuff, a little lag. And uh, hopefully I can get some, some maple. They would prefer the maple as a take over the ash red maple especially. And this regenerates red maple pretty good and the trees don't have to be all that big to make seeds for red maples. Uh, same with the ash. There's no big ash here but I get regen here to beat the dickens. All up through there and it's back all through that. No stems there. Nothing big but they can sure make seeds. There's, there's seed up in there from last year flowers up there, the old male flowers. So it doesn't have to be a very good tree for, for an ash to produce lots of seed. Just to show you that tree there that I was pointing to. See, there's old flowers up there. That'd be a black ash. But those flowers will persist for a long time. And you'll think there's something wrong with the tree. But it's just those old male flowers. Now there's some remnants of where the seed was right there a little fine fine stems that's where the seed was I'm on the high spot here of the trail just thought I'd give you a view of Myers Hill Mountain with the windmills they were installed I believe in 2007 been going ever since.
right there towards the outside there's two rings for the width of my finger and that's further up the tree. Now this is what I look for in the fur where the carpenter ants are making the galleries. And then these big seams in the tree, usually they fill right up with pitch and the call it fat lighter. It would be right full of pitch in there. We're trying to heal that. Great for firewood, but not a very good log tree. Another tree that would come out and see the broken top on that one. That's an aspen. And you get a broken top like that. You just get a bunch of limbs going everywhere and it becomes a widow tree after a while. Them big buttress limbs. And uh, so I take those buggers out. I cut wood out of here three years ago. I wanted to show you how it responds with new growth underneath. See all them little pencil sized sticks? That's uh, ash and aspen sprouts. And uh, there's also a few fur there. The fur were uh, danced already there, but they're. They're uh, responding. And there's some there, some little fir trees. Just wanted to stop here for a minute, show an ongoing project that I've been doing for years. Establishing new butternut trees. I planted the uh, just the nuts in the ground. And here's a butternut tree here. And there's another one over in here. I gotta kinda of cut the limbs away from this tree. Because it's reaching for light, but the second one is there. Here's an earlier butternut tree that I planted. It's uh, four inches breast tight. And uh, it's not gonna be long for it's gonna have nuts on it. I see where a critter climbed up there though. Probably got a bear. They sure like climbing trees around here. But, uh, yeah. I should soon have nuts on that, that one there. Just a little shelter I use in the winter for little snowshoe trips. And a wood supply over there, and my little fire pit down here. I have bear troubles here, but I love to uh, pull on tarps. <laughs> and there's a shovel I keep in there to keep the snow out. I just shoved it in there just now, but uh, they like to chew on the handle. <laughs> uh, they're curious buggers. There's really nothing there for a bear to eat, but they, they lugged off a lot of the tarps I had up on there, and I never did find it. This is one of my trails here, and I cord-ride this corner, because there's a wet run there, and I use just few spruce rails that I've thinned out of the trails uh, to build it up so I won't tear the ground all up. Right here, these are the rails on the ground. It's all cord I've been side by side out here for getting the firewood. That's a good idea to keep your land from being tore up. That's that long trail from earlier that I used to get some firewood out into thin. And it goes right on out the road.